Hey everybody, this is Peg and Frank Lynch. We're the 2020 Cheers of the United Way campaign. We thought a good way to get our campaign going was to give everybody a little tour of Springfield and review some of the programs that the United Way sponsors and funds, some of the locations where those programs are offered, and also to give you a little insight on some of the big donors and great supporters that we have and the volunteer work and contributions that they make. So hop in. Come on, we'll take join us. We'll take a little tour of the town. We'll have fun. We're going to visit with Andrew Navarro. Andrew's one of our volunteers. He's worked with us in a lot of capacities, done a lot of different things for us. He's at American Central Insurance, and we're going to stop by his office. We're on the west side of town. Andrew, Frank, and Peg Lynch, we've met on many occasions. We want to introduce you to our friends around Springfield. Sure. You've done a lot of jobs for United Way, done a lot of volunteer work, right? Yeah. You were an employee campaign uh, coordinator, yeah. right? What other jobs have you done for us? Uh, I've been the camp employee campaign chair for I think two or three years and then actually uh, my my family the Becker family were uh, with my wife Christine and her family were chairs not that long ago as well so I've been involved with the United Way since I moved to town about seven or eight years ago my wife Peg she knows some of the people in your family mm -hmm. I taught with Sarah and Sam sure. for many many years sure. and I told them you are our role models you guys did a great job your family Andrew Talk to us about why you committed to United Way and why you guys have done that much work for us. You know, really, uh, the United Way staff kind of taking a look and the vision councils looking at everything and where the money should go um, really allows us to, to make our donation and then rely on the experts on making sure the money goes to the right places in Sangamon County. In addition to work for United Way, you also serve on some of those not-for-profits. You serve on boards and things for some of the not-for-profits for whom we provide program funding, mm -hmm. right? Correct. What's it, tell us one of the one of the programs that you serve as a board member. Um, I'm a board member at Sojourn Shelter, so um, I've been with them for a couple of years now. So that funding is really critical to providing um, the shelter support for for women and men across Sangamon County that need support um, with domestic violence. Well, thanks for being a volunteer, and thank you for thank you for talking to us. You bet. Morning. Have fun. Thank See you. you. Terrence, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming and talking to us. No problem. Tell nice us what, car. Thank <laughs> you. Tell us what your job is. I'm a principal at Blackhawk Elementary School. And how long have you been with District 186? I've been with District 186 for almost 20 years. How long have you been the principal here? I've been. This, I'm going into my seventh year as principal at Blackhawk. You've also been a United Way volunteer for a long time. Yes, for a very long time. That's, ever since I learned about the United Way, I became a volunteer. Well, now you're on sort of both ends of it. You're on the volunteer and, and giving part. Yes. And you're also part of the receiving end. Yes. Tell us about United Way's commitment to education and how you know we help the school district and kids in the school. Um, one of the ways that I know for sure that they're committed is because they do so, they, they provide supports for so many organizations that are directly impact the education. I have students at my school that receive a lot of the supports from the organization that United Way support, from uh, food, shelter, from the after school programs, from all those different um, avenues or um, ways that United Way supports other organizations in the community. One of the things United Way focuses on is kindergarten readiness. Yes. There's a kindergarten program that we sponsor. You find that that has an impact on the kids coming into your school? Yes, because my school is about 85% low income. So what that means is a lot of the time that our kids don't come to school, they don't have what they need to be prepared for school. So with the different programs uh, like the Dolly Parton um, um, reading program, provides books for kids from uh, kids until they graduate out of kindergarten. That helps them be prepared for school because it's providing them with some kind of resources, books and education. So the programs like the kindergarten readiness are essential, especially the schools like mine where kids are coming to school 
not ready for kindergarten. And having been involved in the United Way and on the board, I know also that one of the things United Way does is it likes to keep data so that we're funding programs that work. We have a third grade readiness program that we fund. About 70% of the kids that go through that show improvement, right? Right. That focuses on reading, third grade reading. And then there's a math program, fifth grade math, right? Right. And about 75% of the kids that participate in those programs and receive those services funded by United Way, does that make a difference to them? Those kids improve? Yes, it does. It makes a huge difference. And uh, as an educator, and I've been an educator for almost 20 years now, I know that third grade is key. You know, the data, the data states that kids that are not reading at grade level at third grade, the possibility of them catching up is very, very slim. So when United Way supports programs like that, it's really impacting the school and it's impacting the community. Because the way that it impacts the community, we're graduating literate kids. And that has a profound effect on the community as a whole. Builds the economy. Yes, it does. Terrence, thank you for your time this morning. I know it's hot. It's, it's hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate a few minutes of your time. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you to United Way. Today we're going to stop by Troxel Insurance Company. Troxel's leadership helped start United Way in 1922, and they have been involved supporting United Way for almost 100 years. And today, their employee campaign is in the top 20 companies. Cass, thanks for joining us this morning. We were just talking about Troxel's role, both in starting United Way and in keeping it running all these years. Yeah. Cass also is our board chairman for this year. Tell us about Troxel's involvement in United Way and why it has always taken United Way so seriously and been such a huge supporter. Well, it's, I mean, it's a, a no brainer really for us. It's all the funds that we can provide from Troxel and our employees go straight back into the community. Um, all the nonprofits for, for helping clothing, feeding, learning, uh, you know, homelessness. It's uh, it's just a no brainer. It helps it helps our whole community, and uh, we have over 100 employees here. Uh, we run a, a strong campaign, and we do a lot of really fun things to raise money throughout the year. Um, it's uh, I, I've been involved. I've been at Troxel six years, and I'm really impressed with how. The ownership and the employees really grasp the whole concept of helping the community. So, Frank, you and Peggy are very nice to run the campaign this year. It's going to be a hard year, but we need to get everybody involved, and uh, and you guys are the right people for the job. We are Thank you. we are faced with some challenges, and you are too as the board chair this year. Not the least of which is just board meetings by video conference. Right. What do you think? What do you think United Way's future looks like as we continue with the with the COVID restrictions and quarantine issues? Well, it's just it's going to be hard on campaigns uh, for sure. Employer-based campaigns are going to be hard pressed. I mean, a lot of people are working from home, um, so we just need everybody to be on board. And uh, it's just a, it's a different world. And. It doesn't mean we can't, you know, we can't raise enough money to help again this year. It's just going to be a diff more difficult year. In addition to the to the challenges this presents in fundraising, it also raises challenges because the needs are increasing, right? Correct. We hear about that at board meetings, and we hear about that as as our months go on. Correct. But five dollars a week from everybody in town who has not participated before could change the outlook of what we can do for the coming year. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you touched on a great point. A lot of nonprofits weren't able to do fundraisers this year. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a very hard year for all the nonprofits in our, in our community. Well, uh, thanks for coming to talk okay. to us about it. See you guys. And we'll see you later. Good luck in your travels. Yeah, yep. thank you. One of our friends on South Grand Avenue is Peerless. Peerless is one of our newer employer supporters. 
Their recent activity in joining the United Way in the last couple of years has helped us end the United Way in Decatur, support programs that provide those basic needs, financial stability, education, and health services in Sangamon County and near Decatur. One of the benefits of running a campaign is that it's a great way to show the whole company's support. More importantly, it lets employers and employees together choose to support the causes they're most concerned with. And finally, it helps employees and employers both utilize United Way's expertise and, ex and experience in collecting data, picking programs that work to solve the problems, and then directing support at those specific programs. Springfield's really a beautiful town. Uh, it's got a lot of nice neighborhoods and it's got great parks. We're going to drive along the beautiful flowers on the Williams Boulevard. United Way does some things in addition to focusing on those four main areas. We have what are called Red Feather Grants and what we do with those is we sponsor programs that don't strictly fall inside the areas of education, financial stability, etc. But they're important to the community. One of them is a grant for disaster relief to the, uh, to the Red Cross. Another one is that we, along with other uh, financial, uh, financial stability and basic needs pro um, programs, support the Homeless Management Information System, which is a database, to make sure that people that receive benefits from uh, basic needs and homeless service organizations get those distributed in a fair and equitable way. Another one is that we support what's called the 211 program. You've all heard of 411 if you need information, you dial 411. Well, if someone needs services along with United Ways across central Illinois and really across the nation, we've established the 211 system, which allows people to strictly, simply, and easily dial 211 and contact them with somebody that can set them up with information about service providers and services that are, uh, that are available in the community. 211, the Homeless Management Information System, Red Cross, those are all called Red Feather Grants and those represent another area where we fund programs to make sure that we have covered all aspects of need in the community to the best extent that we can. Okay, we're stopping by Senior Services to talk with Carol Harms, the Executive Director. Hi, Carol. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Uh, Carol, um, United Way funds three programs in three different issue areas. Can you please explain what those programs are? So, uh, United Way supports our um, Elder Assistance Services, our Nutrition Program, and our Senior Transportation Program. Our Elder Assistance Services, we actually work with individuals um, for utilities, rent, medication, um, anything to keep them independent for as long as they possibly can. We have two um, individuals who are on our team that work with them um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We also have a caregiver specialist program where we work with the caregivers who are actually caring for their loved ones who are struggling as well. So it's kind of a two-fold program. Senior Transportation, we have one of our uh, vans right over there. Uh, we actually have six uh, drivers that are supported through United Way. We take seniors to their doctor's appointments. Uh, if they want to go to the grocery store, they want to go to the bank, if they want to go to a birthday party, we want to keep them social, we want to keep them out into the community. So that's what we're doing. During this COVID-19 uh, season, uh, we're actually doing a lot of uh, medical primarily emergency medical, so that's kind of our key focus right now. Um, and then nutrition, we have our congregate sites and our daily bread, um, so we're keeping meals um, in the homes of the seniors. 
uh, Monday through Friday. And um, when we're open, uh, we would actually have probably between 40 and 80 individuals that come directly here for a meal. And then we do our deliveries out for daily bread as well. Um, that is all run by volunteers who come and actually help us um, deliver the meals. But we have a staff that we have a professional kitchen quality uh, style and hopefully sometime you can come in and see it. Um, but we actually have uh, seniors that get their meals um, on a regular basis and we're just hopefully again keeping people safe, sound and keeping them um, with a good solid nutritional meal every day. One of your goals has always been to keep older folks in the home, right? Correct. Yes. Turns out that in this season, as you call it, that's not such a bad thing. Having people capable of independent self-living in their home turns out to be a really safe alternative as long as they have the kind of services and support that you guys provide. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. thank you for providing those services. Yeah. And we look forward to working with you through United Way again in the future. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh -huh. Enjoy. Uh -huh. Another one of our biggest supporters are the employees at Memorial Medical Center and Memorial Medical Center itself. On the left is Memorial, behind it is the loss, I'm sorry, the, it's an error of judgment right there, the medical school is behind it, and Springfield Clinic is over here on the left as well. They provide activity and cooperation with some of our health care service areas. Most importantly though, they've always been great contributors and always been great corporate sponsors. We're going to turn south on 5th Street and we're going to drive past a couple of things here. John's Hospital, which also, like Memorial, has always been a great corporate and employer employee supporter of, uh, of United Way. And additionally, St. John's Hospital and Catholic Charities has always supported the community with St. John's Breadline, kind of an institution in this town. St. John's Breadline is a place that we have wherein we can be assured that no one in this town will ever starve. No one in this town will ever be hungry. They don't ask how much money you make or where you live or what your circumstances are. Through Catholic Charities, St. John's Breadline helps you by giving you what you need to stay alive on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's sort of the basis for our support of uh, the breadline and other essential services uh, throughout the community. This is, um, this is the old state capitol, a great historic landmark, not just for the community, but for the country. As most people in Springfield know, Lincoln gave his house divided speech here. And he served here along with General Grant. A lot of people don't realize that, but Grant had an office in the Capitol building for a short time when he first was involved in the militia. As you look around the square downtown, around the old state Capitol, you see just how many different companies help support local charities throughout the community. It's one of those points where we are so grateful for the people that work for the state, that help us and that support us through the payroll deduction program. But if you haven't been part of the United Way and you signed up and you gave us $5 a week, you know, the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, the cost of a couple of donuts, if you could do that for us every week and everyone else who doesn't participate now could help us that way, we would double the impact that we could have in this community. Help us if you can. A lot of banks in this town have helped us too. U.S. Bank, PNC, Chase, and if you look around the square, you can see the banks on each corner, Chase over there, um, PNC behind us, U.S. Bank across the street and down, across the street and down the block a little bit. They've all been supportive of us. They've provided board members, ideas, thoughts, and most importantly, corporate and employee funding. Thanks to all of those people. If you're with one of those organizations, we appreciate your help in the past and keep helping us going forward. Man, um, significant architecture in the building. There's a history about that. You should Google that sometime. Horace Mann's always been 
a great supporter of the United Way in Springfield too. It's an insurance company that was started by an educator for educators, and they've continued that role both, both corporately and as a larger player in the market, as well as locally. They've always been great supporters of United Way and always have had a voice in uh, strategic planning for United Way and in educational programs. They're a great neighbor. about your job here in Springfield? Sure, I'm the sales and marketing manager for the city of Springfield for conventions and tourism. Okay, and how long have you been here? I've been here two years now. Um, been in the industry for uh, just under 30 years here in Springfield uh, between tourism, uh, hospitality, and travel. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about why you think United Way is important in the community? Absolutely, I am a huge fan of the United Way and I think uh, the two things that I think are most important about the United Way are the fact that our community desperately needs those of us who can give to give to keep those who are in need um, able to get the resources that they need. And what that does in the end is makes our community more vibrant. Um, as we support those in need, it allows our community to grow and thrive, um, which that makes it a better place for all of us to live. Okay. And the other reason um, I choose the United Way is because of their 100% message. And if I'm going to give um, and uh, make a gift to our community, I wanna know that every penny of that gift is going directly to the services that are being provided to people in need. Yeah, and I think people need to understand that, like she said, 100% of the donations that are given to United Way goes right back into our community. Very so, important. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. Thanks. Yeah. As we head east on Washington Street, we come across another couple of essential elements of our essential services program. On our left is Helping Hands, and right down the street from them is Contact Ministries. We talked about St. John's Breadline before, and we indicated that nobody in this town has to go hungry. Well, Helping Hands and Contact Ministry also tried to provide a service whereby nobody in this town has to be outside at night. Things are tough. Sometimes they can't always accomplish that, but United Way helps fund service programs related to those essential services and great people run these organizations. Hi, we're at the Springfield Urban League and we're gonna have a chat with Ashley and Mark. Ashley. Hi. I'm Peggy Lynch. This is my husband Frank. Hi, and nice we're to the meet 2020 you. campaign chairs this year. Awesome. And we're here to stop by. And can you tell us a little bit about the Urban League? Sure. So um, I am actually the director of education and school age youth programs. Um, the United Way has blessed us um, financially for as long as I've been with the league for our after school programs as well as our summer enrichment programs with the Freedom School and then the Brandon Outreach Center. Uh, the United Way has also supported some of our Head Start programs, our workforce development. So really, United Way Dollars has helped our little kids, our babies, all the way through our adults and everybody in between. So we really love our partnership. Katrina and John have always been awesome. Uh, specifically with the Freedom School program, we serve students who are kindergarten, completed kindergarten. A lot of people don't realize you have to be able to at least have some concept of reading to be able to participate in the program because it is a reading enrichment program. Um, and we serve completed kindergarten through completed eighth grade. Uh, at Brandon Outreach Center, we serve completed kindergarten through completed fifth grade. Sometimes we have some middle schoolers who attend as well, but generally it's completed fifth grade over at the Brandon Outreach Center. The Brandon Outreach Center is a year round program. So we serve during the after school time and then during the summer, we have an all day program. One of the wonderful, unique things about the Brandon Outreach Center is we serve a meal to the students, a hot meal. Even with COVID and quarantine and everything that's going on, we still provide the students with a hot meal, not a sandwich or a snack. And sometimes it's the only hot meal that these kids are getting during the day. So we continue to do that. Um, uh, one of the cool things that we did, if you guys, are safe with me. Yeah, I am yeah. so struggling with this thing. 
Um, one of the cool things that we did at that program is all of our programs were virtual, but we still offered an outdoor activity. And the students came in groups of six. We did yoga. We did some basketball drills. We did some karate. We just did stuff to get them out the house, away from a screen, around some familiar faces. They had these awesome yoga mats that they decorated themselves and they had their own space. Everybody was six foot apart. It was wonderful. Freedom School was completely virtual. Um, usually we serve 150 students and our wait list is anywhere from 75 to 100 kids every summer. This summer, coming off of remote learning, the kids weren't really as interested. We enrolled about 90 and we had at the beginning, probably 60, 70. By the end, about 30 or 40 who finished the program. During the summer and during the quarantine, you guys never turned somebody away who needed never. a hot meal who was a Absolutely kid. Absolutely not. We provided devices for students. The district provided devices for the online remote learning. But then at the end of the school year, they had to collect the devices, clean the devices, get them ready um, for summer school, and then for this fall. And um, for our students who didn't have a phone, a cell phone, or a computer, or a laptop, or a tablet at home, we provided those. And our programs are partially funded by 21st Century. We cannot purchase um, technology with that, those dollars, but United Way money is what allowed us to be able to buy tablets for the students, so. We're in the, we're in the heat of the summer now. One of the important yes. things that people talk about all the time is summer slide. It's something that's gotten oh, yes. a lot of attention in the last few years. Definitely. You guys are helping with that. Oh my goodness, yes. So with our Freedom School program, like I mentioned, it's a summer reading enrichment program. The students read culturally diverse and really awesome books about some of the things that they don't understand that other kids are going through at their same age. Well, we do dibble testing. We did it remotely too. We talked about that, Mitch, like how is this gonna work? But it worked. We do dibble testing where we, at the beginning, test where they are. Halfway through, we test their growth. And then at the end, we test it. We actually do five dibbles tests. And I don't have my exact numbers right now, but every summer it's anywhere between 75 to 80% who grow in their reading comprehension. That means and we have 95 who do not slack at all so that means that seven or eight out of ten kids get better absolutely and nobody slides during the summer no no and when i say that we have the percent the reason that it's not a hundred percent who don't slide because everybody doesn't finish the program we have 150 students who we serve and by the end we usually have about 120 because families go on vacation yeah. um kids do basketball camps or soccer camps or other camps and then they just stop coming towards the end so we are able to really use their numbers because they don't complete all of the assessments. So when people ask you about your programs, you give them data to show they work? Oh, absolutely. And when you absolutely. ask United Way to help, you give United Way data showing that oh, it works. Oh, absolutely. Thanks yes. for talking to us yes. today. It's nice to see you. You guys too. Thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you and nice to see you guys again. Okay, we're stopping by Washington Middle School where I was a teacher for 30 years and I have first-hand knowledge on the importance of the programs that are supported by United Way. Whether or not it's an after-school program or a food program, the support of United Way was essential. In fact, I'm proud to say that last year almost a thousand teachers participated in the employee giving campaign really shows how deeply our educators care about our community. We look forward to your continued support this year and we encourage all of those who have never contributed to jump on board with Frank and I and all our everyday heroes and support United Way. Not too far from Washington Middle School is the Boys and Girls Club. Tiffany Mathis is the executive director and we support a program here that does exactly the kinds of things Peg was talking about. As you recall from some of our interviews and some of our information, we support kindergarten readiness, third grade math, third grade reading and fifth grade math. And the Boys and Girls Club works 
with the United Way to provide a program that supports after school learning and mentoring. We're going to talk with Tiffany Mathis and Emily Bergschneider from the Boys and Girls Club. Good morning, oh, ladies. Good morning. How are you today? <laughs> Doing good. Thank you for joining us. We're on sort of a tour of Springfield, and we're talking to some of the directors of the programs that United Way supports and some of the people who support United Way. I wonder if you guys could talk to us about the program that uh, United Way helps Boys and Girls Club with. Project Learning uh, Program. So that's a K-5 program here for kids throughout Springfield. And we work on academics throughout the school year, um, enrichment, provide meals every day and then we also do um, a full day summer camp that works on preventing summer slides and making sure that kids don't lose anything that they learn throughout the school year as well as providing fun camp-like activities in the afternoon breakfast lunch and a, and a trip. Yeah. you know these are tough times tiffany tell us how the current restrictions and the current things that the current problems we're facing affect the programs that you're offering and tell us a little something about how you're making the adjustment well i mean it's most definitely been an adjustment in the number of students we're able to serve we normally would have a summer program that could have about 125 kids here in the building um, and with the reopening uh, in the phases and phase three especially we had to reduce our capacity so that we could socially distance and really get a good handle on how do we make it through this? Because it's not an option for Boys and Girls Clubs to be closed. We did have our doors closed previously when everything was kind of, we are just learning about what was going on. But with the guidance that's been provided to us through IDPH and ISB, who's also a funding body of ours, we understand there's a way to get through this. So we did thousands of temperature checks, you know, this summer with all of the kids and the staff. We kept stable classrooms with those smaller numbers. So we know now how to make it through and and you know knock on wood we didn't have any positive cases in our building this summer which was wonderful because the guidance works so um it was really great to reopen so that the kids could see our faces and they were really excited about being here and we really felt like okay what else can we do so we pivoted and started partnering again with the food bank and getting meals out to families you know we're handed out thousands of boxes this summer three days a week uh, serving at least 250 to 500 households, depending on the day. So, you know, we took this opportunity as an organization, understanding what we mean to the community to serve differently and to, to be more intentional with the impact that we're trying to make. Wouldn't you agree that since this happened, the need actually has increased? But one of the problems that not-for-profits are facing is that it's affected all of us. So that as the need has increased, the resources that are made available to us, and frankly, donations, those have been challenging. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think two things have happened. Donors have kind of pivoted to become more intentional about exactly what is it they want to see happen in the community, which could make dollars dwindle depending on what your organization is doing. But I also think it provides nonprofits especially an opportunity to pivot and figure out what needs they can meet. Um, to maybe engage donors and, and show that, hey, this is what you know us for, but here's, here's more and here's what we can do with more and here's how you can help. So I think that the need has most definitely increased, but it's also allowed those that, that have supported us in the community to know that there are smiling faces here to serve them with, you know, grace and uh, with a humble heart and we're not here to judge anyone. So it's really provided us an opportunity to be even more engaged in our community and meet those needs because we're caring for kids and their families. You mentioned something that I think's been important to United Way for a long time, and I wanted to maybe get your input on it. One of the things United Way focused on when we entered into a new strategic plan several years ago is we wanted to make sure that we, we let the donor know where their dollars were going, that they were going to what experts in the community and providers thought were the most needy and most essential programs, and also we wanted to show the donors results. We wanted to show them data about how that works. How does Boys and Girls Club provide United Way and other donors with data that your programs are successful and accomplish what you're trying to get done? Well, luckily for us, we have a membership uh, tracking system called Kid Tracks that we use here. We have a data coordinator. So anything from attendance, temperature checks, uh, different activities, surveys, demographic information, all of that builds into what we're able to report out. Uh, for grant purposes, for grant reporting purposes, really to give donors, as we do on our impact report every year, 
a snapshot even of, you know, what impact are we making? How many meals are we serving? How many snacks did we serve? Um, it, it really does matter and it, and it shows how large of an impact what may seem to be a small organization is making here in Springfield. And we're serving nine locations during the school year. So um, I think that tracking that data really gives a, a much deeper dive into what an organization is doing instead of just saying, we're here to serve kids, you know. Um, so I think that that's important to have that data, to back up that what we're saying we're doing, we're doing. And this is the impact that it's making and how we are improving our community. With United Way, the, the programs that we fund have given us data that show between 70 and 75% of the kids that participate in programs like yours and in the kindergarten readiness programs all show 70 to 75% show improvement in reading or math skills. Um, my recollection is that the reading part is about 72 and the improvement in math skills is about 75%. So that means three out of four kids that go to programs like yours have improvement in their educational abilities and their basic skills. Yeah, Do you find that too with your data? Um, I do find that true for a number of reasons. Emily, our chief operating officer in running the operations of all of our locations has been very intentional about making sure that what we're doing here not only supports uh, those who need us most, but also wraps around what the district is doing. I think it's very important to do these things here, but also be mindful that we don't need to reinvent the wheel of information. Whatever they're learning within District 186, we should be able to duplicate here. We should be using the same curriculums, the same applications on their iPads. And Emily's been very intentional about making sure that that happens. So we're not just increasing it for the summer, we're actually building into their school year and, and, and helping the district. I, I think it's very counterproductive to create your own stuff in a vacuum. So when you talk about those pre-K programs or the early reading programs and whatnot, all of that builds into making sure that we are setting these students up for success because it's not just about the club. So if, you, if you're getting these kids involved in these programs from zero to, to three or four, by the time they hit kindergarten, they're old enough to come to us, we're able to, as she would say, you know, impact the whole child the whole year. And I think that that's very important to understand. All of us need to work together with entities that already exist to just make a stronger impact. So we don't have to do it all. School district does a great job. We do what we do. And it just, it just really benefits the kids here in the community, which is why we can't close. You guys have done a great job. You're an institution here and you're right. This is an organization and a set of programs that has to continue. Thanks for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you so much for coming by. Hi, we're here to talk to some more great Springfield employers that support us and always have. We're going to talk to Scott Germerad at Springfield Electric. We're at Springfield Electric. We're here to talk to Scott Germerad about your company and your founders' great impact on the community and your support for United Way. Sure. Um, first of all, thank you for years of service. Absolutely. You guys, the Schneering family, the Dungans, and your family have all had a huge impact, not just on our organization. And Mr. Schneering was one of the founding members yeah. uh, early on. Um, but also on the whole community, hospitals and education institutions. Talk a little bit about Springfield Electric and please tell us, please tell us sure. about how much you guys and your relatives and your family have impacted the community. Ah, uh, you know, it, it really kind of just starts with, um, you know, I think the, what was ingrained in me as a, as a child with my parents and what was ingrained in, in um, my parents as well, you know, from, from their parents and, and um, I, you know, as far as Springfield Electric goes, it just, you know, you started out as a, small family-owned company and it's grown over time um, but I think the one thing that's always been um, shared and, and ingrained in myself and, and also with our associates is that you know we've been very fortunate we've been very blessed to have 88 years of, of success and so uh, you got to share that and give back to the community um, that has given us everything um, and, and not just here in Springfield, but in the other, you know, 18 locations outside of Springfield that we also have to try to give back to those communities. Um, and it's difficult, it's a challenge, you know, to, to, you know as you grow and as you um, move into new areas that, you know, trying to get that, the, you know, the buy in there. Which, and it, 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 it comes over time, for sure, so. You guys have had members of the board, you've had board chairs. Sure. 
the Schneerings, the Dungans, and the Germerods right. have all been part of it. Right. And you still have some guys now that, that run and chair um, our, the panels that make decisions about funding. Yeah. You, uh, you work with those guys every day, and thank you on behalf of the community sure. for that. Absolutely. Tell us about, about the United Way and what Springfield Electric, why you've always been so supportive about the United Way. I think it becomes, it really comes down to the fact of really what United Way stands for. Um, they, they, they're here to help as many people as they possibly can, and they take those, whether it be you know, donations in kind or the financial you know, commitments, and they make sure that everybody you know, is taken care of from basic needs to you know, financial help and, and education there, and um, you know, medical help, and, and, and just trying to take care of those that need the help, first and foremost, and I think that falls in line with where my great-grandfather, my grandfather, and my parents, and you know, where they just kind of fell, just falls in line in a similar, um, similar respect, of, you know, as, as far as how that operates. So. Well, on behalf of all of us, thank you. Sure. You guys have an employee giving campaign? Correct. We've been, our, one of our themes today is that if, if everybody who has been involved in the past continue to be involved, sure. notwithstanding the, the challenges that we face right sure. now. Sure. Well, it's important right now. I mean, that's the, the thing is, is that United Way, you know, and, and those that can give, you know, to help support. It's more important this year, I think, than any other year. And if, you've, so. if you haven't given in the past, the people that haven't sure. participated could just offer $5 a week. Sure. In addition to what we've raised in the past, we could address increasing needs in, a, in an environment where available funds are falling off. Sure. So on behalf of United Way, thanks to you and your family well, thank and your you. organization. Absolutely. And thanks for talking to us. Today. Absolutely. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing about getting involved with United Way is, is to, um, it, it doesn't always have to be, you know, the executive of, of your company. I think there's, there's ways to get people involved that, for them to be able to see the, the impact of where um, the, the, the funds go, where, you know, where the, um, uh, the donations and things like that. Seeing that, that, that end result, I think, is the, probably the most powerful impact that you could have in being part of United Way. Hi, we're here at the Enos Park Historic Area Sculpture Garden. I want to talk about one of the other things that United Way does. In addition to the four issue areas that we, uh, in which we fund programs, and in addition to the Red Feather grants like Red Cross that we supply funding for, we also coordinate volunteer work throughout and across the community for a variety of organizations. One of the organizations was the Enos Park Neighborhood Historic Association. Let's take a look. The United Way coordinates days of action during the course of the year. We get volunteers involved and people come to the United Way asking us where to, where to get involved and we help organize volunteers throughout and across the, the community. Here are just a few examples. The Blood Center, the Food Bank, Land of Lincoln Goodwill, Henson Robinson Zoo. We send volunteers out all across the city to, to do all kinds of jobs. I've had the privilege of volunteering for Days of Action projects for many years. One of my favorite places is to go over to Boys and Girls Club. Um, many years ago, they needed some lawn work and it's just something I've always enjoyed. And so I took some tools over, an edger, a hedge cleaner, a, a weed whacker, and a lawnmower with a grass catcher. And I just spent some time doing the best that I could. We got a couple of lawn chemicals and put those on, and I just did that a couple of times a year for several years. The people at Boys and Girls Club seemed to like it. I enjoyed doing it with them, and I was happy I did it. So if you're interested in volunteering, the place you can get connected to a place you want to volunteer is through the United Way. communities. Um, they've been a long-time provider of good services in this community and they've also been uh,
strong supporters of and recipients of Dallas from United. We have a great sign right there that makes us feel welcome. We're going to go in and talk to Amy. Hi, we're at Mercy Communities and we're here to talk to the Executive Director. Amy, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your programs? Hi, sure. I'm Amy Boyles. I'm the Executive Director of Mercy Communities. Um, we are a, a, a homeless agency here in Springfield that serves families with children and we have 10 units of um, transitional housing and then we also have uh, 20, about 20 units of permanent supportive housing here at Mercy. So with our two programs, what we do is we provide housing and supportive services to help our clients get back on their feet and become independent um, and self-sufficient. So that is our program in a nutshell. <laughs> so. Tell us about United Way's assistance. So United Way's assistance is incredible. We actually have, um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you think of United Way's support is, is monetary, right? And we are so incredibly grateful for their gifts. We have, um, United Way supports us for our transitional program, also our permanent supportive housing program, but we also kind of have like this third hidden program um, here at Mercy. We house the, um, the, it's called HMIS, the Homeless uh, Management Information System. So the, like the computer data side of all of the homeless agencies here in town. Um, so that is housed here also, and, Mer and United Way is a big supporter of that as well. But not only does United Way support us with um, the monetary gifts, but the level of support that United Way provides to us um, is, is really outstanding and that we can bounce any ideas off of any of the staff at United Way. Um, they're always there to give tours and spread the word about Mercy in the community. Uh, the support is tremendous. Amy, you also serve as the president of the Emergency Food and Shelter Service Program. I do, thanks to you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's another program that, that sort of has its feet in United Way. Um, that's a program that's designed to receive federal dollars and then find appropriate places for emo emergency food and shelter dollars to move to. Yes. Tell us about your role with that. Uh, so so um, I, I started um, as a community, or not a community member, but like a homeless representative member. Um, at the time, we did not have anybody from the homeless community that sat on the board. So it, this was probably five or six years ago. Um, and I was working at Helping Hands. Um, so I came onto the, onto the board then to give the homeless a voice um, at the table. Uh, since then, my role has grown a little bit and uh, I do not, um, at, at Mercy, we do not apply for funding um, because we primarily, with the EFSP program, we primarily serve uh, emergency assistance. And, and, and at Mercy, we have transitional housing and we have permanent housing, so we don't do any kind of emergency shelter. So um, they have asked me to remain on the board and, and continue giving that voice to the homeless population, um, but there are other people there now that can do that. But um, Frank stepped down as chair and because we don't receive any funding, I um, was nominated to take the role as, of chair. Stood up, stood up, walked up to the plate. That's how it <laughs> I, I accepted my nomination, so um, I, I really enjoy that work. Uh, this year, there between um, phase 37 and COVID funds, uh, there's about $200,000 brought into the community that way um, to help help solve those issues of food and shelter. Well, thank you so, for your work on thank that. You. Um, you know, the United Way usually makes grants in one of four issue areas, basic needs, education, health and financial stability, yes. and describe which of those your programs provide services in. So we fall under the financial stability program issue area. Um, and we do that because we are trying so hard to teach uh, these moms how to remain or to become self-sufficient um, and to become independent and a lot of times that is um, teaching them to how to handle their purse strings so to speak um, so a lot of it just uh, revolves around the, the financial side of things you know bet between helping them uh, secure a job and becoming um, proficient at skills that they need to have a job um, 
budgeting, it all revolves around becoming financially independent. To help people move from that place where they need essential services on an emergency basis to where they are financially stable and can participate in the community and the economy independently. Yes, make sound decisions. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Sure. And thank you for your service. Sure, thank thanks you. so much. Thanks yep. for your support. Uh -huh. We really appreciate it. We're at McLaren Elementary School, which is on near Ena, in the Enos Park area, where some of the other service providers are that we've talked about. In education, our primary concerns, our, our priorities, are kindergarten readiness, third grade reading, and fifth grade math. Kindergarten readiness because you have to be ready to go into school and have it to get any value out of it. Third grade reading because in order because before then you learn to read, and from third grade on you read to learn. And then fifth grade math. Fifth grade math allows people to become part of the economy in a more fully functional and complete way, and we focus on all three of those areas, along with job, play, job training and placement afterwards. Programs that focus on those areas are programs that we pay attention to, and we strive to fund through your donations. Hi, Hi Molly, Peg and Frank Lynch. As you know, we're the United Way Chairs for the 2020 campaign. Tell us about Compass for Kids. What kind of academic support, what kind of academic programs do you offer? Primarily Camp Compass, our summer learning program, is really our academic intervention. It is basically a hybrid between a summer school and a summer camp. And so we hire actual teachers, you know, this past summer we had 32 licensed teachers. We hire administrators, we hire literacy coaches, math coach, and technology coach to prevent summer learning loss the students in math and reading every day for six weeks over the summer. Tell us what kind of effect the, the current COVID crisis has had on attendance and your programs. It's changed the design of everything as well as the attendance. We were very skeptical about this summer's Camp Compass, but the attendance actually exceeded our expectations. We had very good attendance throughout the five weeks that we held virtual camp compass this summer, as well as pretty high engagement. I think out of the 219 kids that we served, 75 of them had perfect attendance for the entire camp. So we were blown away by that because it is very hard to get kids to participate remotely as well as to be engaged you know, via a platform such as Zoom or something. But we were able to do it um, with a lot of hard work, as well as we did prov provide attendance incentives, which I think helped. COVID's had an impact on resources that have come in, but also on the need that has had to go out, right? The need for the programs that have had to go out, right? For sure. Have you continued to, to document kids' progress through the course of the programs as you did pre-COVID? Yes. Um, so for example, like, you know, in the spring when we switched Club Compass and our backpack feeding program to be remote, the need increased for sure for our backpack feeding program. You know, families were struggling with food as well as some basic household supplies like toilet paper. We, we did continue to do our post assessments for the end of the school year. Now they didn't, the results weren't as strong as a typical year because we had lost ground in March, April, and May, but we still did our post assessments. And then for Camp Compass this summer, we still did pre and post assessments in math and in reading. We just had to modify them and make them shorter because the teachers were conducting them via Zoom instead of in a classroom. Tell us about United Way's role in, in the programs that you provide. United Way is our largest private funder for both Camp Compass as well as Club Compass, our school year program. So without United Way, our programs wouldn't exist. Thanks for talking to us today. Good luck and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. We appreciate your support.
support United Way. It's the largest private funder of local health and human services. Our success can only happen through generosity of our supporters and our dedicated volunteers. Please visit www.springfieldunitedway.org or call 726 7000. If you go to the website or give us a call, you can learn about how you can volunteer and most importantly, you can become part of something that's been around Springfield for a long time and has made a huge difference. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Please contribute.